How do you talk to firefighters about firefighting without ever having done the job yourself? It's hard to speak to your audience without fully understanding their perspective, so our new marketing team hopped on a plane to Texas to experience what it's like to work firsthand with America's heroes. I mean, as a marketer, customer research, like having a very deep understanding of, you know, what they go through, what they think, what they like, what their day-to-day -day is like, that's really important to me and Sam knows that that's, you know, something I've been looking to do more and more of. And you know, I think that opportunity for us to send some folks down to Teak sort of fell into our lap through a friend. And yeah, when Sam reached out to me, I jumped at it. When our team arrived on scene at Brayton Field, they had no idea what to expect. It's one of the premier fire training academies in the United States. We walk around and just scope it out. I'm in. Turn right. Short hallway, left, then the long hallway. Okay, and then hang out by the antique fire truck and look at the fire fields. Okay. <laughs> All right, sweet. We will see you soon. Jeff Doran is a longtime friend of ours from Siddons Martin Emergency Group. He's also the training director at the Teaks Municipal Fire School, and he showed our team around the facility. This gave him a chance to get a lay of the land before training started the next day. It's, you can see a fire, you can kind of see a little bit. When you start to attack the fire, everything in there changes. You can't see your hand in front of your face. Um, but he's also the training director at Teaks. Um, so he, you know, took us around when everything was empty and, you know, we stopped and he explained what each prop was and it was really like, I was mind blowing how big it was. All of these projects at some point in time may be burned, but they all, they all represent different things um, that you would find in an industrial environment. The other thing that really struck me was the level of detail that went into planning each prop. Like the, they must have some really good engineers there to like, build all of these structures that are, you know, they look like they're half broken, you know, half crumbling, but, you know, they're all there to serve a purpose to simulate these real scenarios. The facility is fueled by liquid propane gas, which gives a realistic yet controllable training experience for the firefighters. Because they divide them up into companies and they work together throughout the week and they get to know each other and they get to work together with each other. So it really is cool to see them come together as a team. Receiving turnout gear was a highly anticipated moment by our team and the first big step in their training experience. I was excited to get the turnout gear. Um, I don't know why, but just putting on the whole outfit. Well, I like costumes and themes and dressing up, so that's probably why I was so excited. All right, well, we got all our equipment. They are on the hunt for boots small enough for my feet because it's not very many <laughs> lady firefighters here. Um, yeah, so I think we gotta get this squared away and then we're gonna learn how to use it all. After getting fitted for gear, our team was sent to basic safety and PPE training in an introductory course, gradually working their way to field exercises. So the very first thing that we did after the lecture were these different mazes, and it was a sensory deprivation in the darkness. But I got to go through both of them in our street clothes and lights on with the instructors. So I didn't think that it was gonna be that big of a deal. Like we knew exactly what was coming. We had been through it before. But then something about getting the gear on, and especially with the CBA mask, experiencing that breathing for the first time, um, so like that kind of like added to the, I guess like excitement or adrenaline. That was a lot harder than I thought. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's very fast that you guys were in there. Yeah. It, gets, it gets complicated it's a lot faster. Yeah, there's like, even though we did the whole thing like in the light, it was like, well completely. From there, they transitioned to a series of more advanced courses where they would fight fire, all under the careful eye of an experienced instructor. Um, the way that they were describing the setup and like the strategy and what we would do, it reminded me of like a football locker room, like movie setting where the coach is like going over the plays. So it's a matter of understanding what's going on in front of you and working towards it. You're in control, not the fire. You are, you're the firefighter. The Teeks instructors are a tight knit group traveling in from all over the country year after year to volunteer their time to teach the next generation of firefighters. And every instructor here 
they're honored to be here. Oh, I feel that big time. I, I think every instructor that I've talked to, they've been teaching for like 35 years, 17 years. It just seems like it's this like amazing, fantastic group of people that keep showing up year after year after year. That's the fortunate part about this. Once students come through these programs, they really can adapt very quickly out in an actual environment, an actual incident, when they're working with somebody they haven't worked with before. Believe it or not, I learned more from you guys over the years than what I do at home. Before each burn, the instructors gave a thorough breakdown of the prop and each hose line's role in putting the fire out. Different techniques are taught for different scenarios and types of hazards. The team couldn't wait to finally get thrown into the fire. So line number one will advance. We're gonna start out right here. And line four is gonna go upstairs as the other line go under. Uh, naturally, we're not going to be traveling over fire. We're going to do it quick and with a purpose, but we're not going to pass them up. We're going to try to stay even with the nozzles on the ground, right? Throughout the week, they were put through two to four unique burns each day. The burns were really exhilarating. Like, it was, you know, scary at first, um, but the instructors, like, they really wanted us to have a good under experience and walk away with a good understanding of you know, all the different things that might have to be done. So they would like tap us in to do special projects, like go to the front of the line to turn the nozzle off um, and, and different things like that. What you can't see from the footage here is all the work our media team was doing to capture the perfect angle. After we got back, Spencer shared some of his unique perspective with our team. You know, since I had a bird's eye view a lot of the time, it was really evident to me how important the teamwork was and just how much it really worked. I don't know, like standing in the middle of a fire scene where there are these like huge flames all around you and like everyone is, you know, working hard but has different goals and like it was just like a really, made me feel like a badass. There was one moment that I still remember that really stood out to me where we were doing a prop. It was my favorite one because it was like the most involved. We had to go upstairs and downstairs and like under a thing and a lot more involved to it. And it was the biggest fire. But for the majority of that one, like not only was it like huge fire and water spraying everywhere, but there was a double rainbow. And it was just like, I don't know, the coolest thing to be in this weird, you know, simulation of a life or death experience, but then also have that natural beauty happening around us. Um, that was fucking sweet because there was a lot of fire and double rainbow and a lot of water. There was a rainbow out there, yeah. That was double. <laughs> From a videographer's perspective, it was cool to be able to capture this whole experience and learn more about it myself. I was able to watch the whole process from start to finish, from the instruction to the walkthrough, and then watch each hose line improve every time they ran the exercise again. Between the first prop the first day and the last one the last day, the difference in how quick they mastered each prop was really drastic. Despite the exhilaration from new experiences, there's one thing that couldn't be ignored, the Texas heat. It was like 104 degrees every day that we were there, I think. Knowing that it was going to be that warm, plus wearing the bunker gear and like literally being in a fire, I was worried about how I'd be able to handle that part. But, and honestly, like it didn't feel that terrible. I mean, it was definitely hot and I, the second we put all the bunker gear on, like I could just feel the sweat like instantly. It was like a shower inside my turnout gear because I was sweating that much. Um, but the instructors did take it really seriously. As soon as we were done with a drill, we, they would have us come back under the shade and they would say, bunker down, which meant take off all your gear and push your pants down to your boots. All right. It was also really fun to watch the instructors in each prop 
and see how they guided all the firefighters and how they made sure that everybody was safe the entire time. By today, they look like they've been working together for years. That's amazing. It's fun. So Kat, who was sort of like our, our handler for the whole time, um, she she's an, an a TEKS instructor, but she was uh, specially assigned to us to <laughs> make sure that we were taken care of and you know safe and healthy and all that. She took us around a couple afternoons to see all the other classes that were happening at TEKS. And again, like I was really surprised because we were just like so focused on the firefighting, like the literal firefighting aspect of it. You know, we saw people learning skills where, you know, they were like lowering someone in a stretcher um, in a rope from like the top of a building to the ground. Um, there was another scenario where they were simulating a rescue of someone trapped like in a pipe, you know, like in a manufacturing situation. Um, we got to see people um, doing rescues with industrial farm equipment, which is way more common than I realized. Can you whip that hood up? Does that hood go up any? Because if he's digging, we don't want this thing dropping more, so we need to go ahead and stop that crush. Um, we also got to see people getting rescued out of trenches and extrication, and it just like really made it hit home how many different skills you have to have to be a firefighter. This is going to allow some of these uh, firefighters to go back to their homes and understand like if, if we encounter this then we know how to keep ourselves safe we know where where to start or we know what kind of equipment we need to start buying or purchasing in order to prepare for the event that this happens. Throughout the week I started having this like I don't know like a burning desire to just like have more of that in my life like I just I really loved the experience and I mean, never in a million years did I think that that's something that I would ever pursue, but like the community was great. I really liked the physical aspect of it, like the, the hard work and and just learning how to start preparing myself for all those different rescue situations, like that just felt really appealing to me. So as I was thinking about this all week, I also spent a lot of time talking with Kevin Quinn, who is one of the TEKS instructors, but he's also the vice chair of the National Volunteer Fire Council, um, which is basically, you know, the organization for volunteer firefighters in America, and just talk to him more about, you know, the organization and um, his experience as a volunteer firefighter. And, you know, we had done, like through this job, like we've, we've toured a lot of volunteer fire stations around the country, and it's just, I don't know, it's always like really felt like a good community to be part of. So I decided to take the plunge and, and join a department here. Um, we're actually at Reynolds Fire Department right now where I just started as a volunteer um, a few weeks ago. I still have a lot to learn, but I mean, they've been super amazing, um, really helpful with training. And so, yeah, I'm just, I'm really excited to be part of this community and continue the journey. At the end of the week, our team not only walked away with experience fighting fires, but a better understanding of the job and a new respect for the hardworking men and women who make a living out of saving lives and protecting property in the American Fire Service.